Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. To new subscribers, to get the best out of the blog, there are a few ways that you can go about it. The first thing that you need to understand is that you have come probably in the middle or closer towards the end of a work that I had been doing for the Lord for the last four and a half years. The Master's Voice Prophecy blog is a work that the Lord God commissioned in May of 2019 when the Lord spoke to me and told me to open up a blog in his name and start to share the private things that I thought he was just revealing to me, private things that the Lord has been teaching me over the past 10 years. And so I started the blog in May of 2019, and it has kept going until now. A year and a half later, in August of 2020, the Lord spoke to me and told me that I was not moving fast enough. He said to me that I should use the tools of my generation, that I should make use of other media. And he directed me to start this YouTube channel that you are watching. Over time, the Lord then brought in my footsteps to other platforms that I would not have gone to on my own. So you can now find me on many different platforms and that is the Lord's process. At the time being, I have not had time to update the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. I haven't updated the blog in about six months. I think the last prophecies I wrote there the last time I updated it fully was in July of 2023, and that is going to be another block of work. I will need a block of time to start putting many videos since July until now, putting the written prophecies on the blog. So one of the ways that you can follow is here on video. I'm also on Rumble, BitChute, and Brighton. You can also follow on audio, which I highly recommend because if you know that you are four and a half years behind, then that means that there are a lot of topics, there are a lot of information, there's a lot of teaching, there's a lot of revelation and prophetic utterance that the Lord has managed to cover by his grace working in me over four and a half years. So when you listen to the audio, you can move faster because it's less distracting. It's in the form of a podcast. And so as you listen, you can drive, you can look after your kids, you can walk your dog. You can even listen when you're at work if you're someone who's able to split your attention that way. And so audio platforms are SoundCloud and Spotify, Google Podcast and Apple Podcast. But I've noticed that there are quite a lot of other automatic podcasts that due to the algorithm, or I think just how many people are listening to the audios, there are many other podcasts like Odyssey that have just picked up the Master's Voice Prophecy blog podcast, even though I don't actually have an account there. So this is just God's favor. You can listen in audio, you can watch in video. There is a Spanish language channel that is called Canal Profetico, La Voz del Señor, and it's here on YouTube. The, t the video updates on that channel are not quite at par, but there is a rumble for it, and I think also a bit shoot and a Brighton for it. There's a Telegram, there's an Instagram, there's a Facebook, there's a TikTok. There are many places that you have the option to follow along. And so you come to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, the best thing that you can do for yourself, if you're listening to a topic and you have questions, understand that I have addressed that topic already. It's not a new topic. It's something that I've probably covered five or 10 or 15 or even 20 times before. Some of the themes on this blog have been covered for years consistently, such as the Russia and China invasion of the United States. The United States will come to her final end being humbled by Russia and China in warfare. It's going to be a very quick war. America is going to be attacked without knowing it. And the Lord has revealed this in almost 30 prophecies over the last, since 2020, no, since 2015, 2014 was the first time that I saw Russia here in America in my dreams, all the way up to now, 2024. So there's the Russia and China playlist. You can work your way through the blog, either using audio, video, or using the playlists. There's a Russia and China playlist. There's the sin series, which is very good for people who are struggling with sin. You have sin, you have repetitive issues in your life. You know that you are compromised, whether you're a Christian or not. You cannot overcome the appetites in your life. You know that you have lust. You know that you have envy, greed, unforgiveness, jealousy. Those things 
are disqualifying you from being able to enter into the eternal kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so rather than arguing about scandal and news that is everywhere, it is time to work on yourself so that you can be an acceptable bride before the Lord Jesus Christ at the hour of his coming. So look into the sin series, look into the repentance series. A lot of people don't know how to repent. Repentance is not when you feel bad. Repentance is not about you. Repentance is about understanding that you have broken the laws of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have strayed away from the narrow path and you're walking on the broad highway that leads souls to hell. And so the core of repentance is not making excuses. Well, everybody's doing it and mine is not so bad. And why is she always talking about sin? Because sin kills. Sin will cut you off from Jesus Christ. Sin will make him say, depart from me, I knew you not, and then you will be perishing in the lake of fire forevermore. If that is how you want to end, you don't need to listen to the sin series. You don't need to learn how to repent. But if you know that you have felt the Lord Jesus Christ scratching at your heart as you have come across this blog, whether you found it last week or whether you've been here with me since I had 32 subscribers long ago, how I missed that time, then now is the time to be honest with yourself. Learn how to repent. Repentance pleases God. Repentance is a privilege that men will not always have. There will come a time where God will shut the door of taking applications. There will come a time when we are going through those trying times that Jesus says that they will be the worst times that have ever come upon the earth. You'll cry out to God and there'll be nothing. We will be locked in. The Bible says that men will seek for death in those days and not find it. Have you ever thought about that? Being stuck on an earth where you hate the things that are happening so bad that you want to commit suicide, but by some powerful application that will be working on earth at that time, even the spirit of death will not want to touch humanity and you will have to live through it. Do you have the inner fortification? Have you built your house with stone and brass or is the inner house of your life made with hay and straw? Remember, all works, all men are going through the fire and fire consumes wood and straw, but fire refines gold and silver. And so it's up to you. There are many playlists here. You go through the playlist from the oldest video to the newest video, whether you use the video platform or the audio platform. By the time you go through a playlist, you will know everything that the Lord wants you to know about it. And then any new video will simply be icing on top of the cake. It is your responsibility to learn what you do not know. If I have covered something, I am not going to come and teach it to you by you asking a question. That is extreme laziness. If you have a question, you must understand that there is an entire library that it is your job to go through. And another thing is, if you are an adult, you will be able to watch the things that are here. I'm not guaranteeing that you will be able to handle them. Most people think that their weakness and their fear is my problem. It is not my problem. When the Lord came to me with the things that he came to me, they were heavy upon my heart. And you need to ask yourself, in those days, 10 years ago, when he came to me in 2012, who was there for me to go to? Who, who was I going to go to and say, I'm having these dreams? I had to bear the dreams by myself. When I needed comfort, I went back to the same Lord who gave me the dreams to seek the comfort. You cannot come here and demand hope. Who told you that hope is your birthright in the end times? Haven't you read Matthew 24? Haven't you read the book of Revelation? Who's offering you hope in those texts? Who's promising you and telling you, oh no, there's a nice ending. It's just going to be bad for a while, but then it gets better. It gets worse and it continues to worsen until Jesus comes to put an end to the horror. You have a Bible, you haven't read it, and then you are offended because God finally found someone who has read it, loves it, and is willing to show her face and tell you how it's going to go. You don't have a right to hope. The Lord has not sent me to comfort you. He never told me, Celestial, go and comfort my people. He told me, lift up your voice like a trumpet, make a strident sound. A strident sound is a loud sound that punches at your spirit until you don't want to come here anymore, and that is your civil right. No one compels you to be here. You can leave any time. Always remember, I don't know when you come and I won't know when you say things like, you lost me. What do you mean I lost you? I never had you. The spirit of the, of the Lord is crying out with a strident sound, looking for his people. He's shouting out for his sheep, last call for the second ark of Noah. When you say I was listening until you lost me with this, I 
didn't even know that you were here. I never had you. You're not his. Those who are his, they hear. My sheep hear my voice. And the stranger, they will not follow. So the sheep that are hearing, you are welcome to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. The goats who are not hearing, you can wander around and eventually you will hear something that you cannot tolerate and then you will leave. And as you came and I did not know, when you leave, I will not know. And that too is just life. And so the prophecy for today, some aspects of it I have known for quite a while, but I'm not one who speaks out of turn. For the Lord to be able to use someone in the prophetic ministry, that person has to have what we call reticence. Reticence is the ability to hold your tongue until it's time to speak. If you are somebody that God cannot trust to hold your tongue until it's time to speak, it is not likely that you are a prophet. Don't even tell yourself that, no, I'm just a rough seed. You may be someone who has prophetic dreams, but to function in this calling, to function in this office, the biblical office, you have to be crushed. This is because God does not like leaven in his prophets. There are many people who call themselves prophets, and when I look at you, I can see the fear of man is upon you. You will never stand true as a stalk if you fear man. If you care about subscribers and likes and clicks, if you bother because people talk about you and people hate you, they, they will always hate the spirit of the Lord and the people will always hate the truth. The spirit of the Lord is not welcome in his own earth because these are the last days. This is the time of the mockers and scoffers. If the mockers and scoffers don't arise and mock and scoff, then we cannot fulfill the scriptures for Matthew 24 says, that the mockers and scoffers will abound. They're going to have the floor. If these people don't have the floor, how is it the prophetic end times? Let us follow along. And so God doesn't want leaven in his messengers. God requires courage. God requires reticence, the ability to hold your peace until he says, speak forward, release the word. And so the word that the Lord gave to me came exactly on the 1st of January, but he has been speaking to me about these things on and off since 2016. And they, they were quite some things. And I think there are a few prophecies to this vein on the blog, but it is not yet time to make them into videos. I will only make things into videos that God tells me to make into videos. So that's another thing. If you come and you have your little pet Bible interests and like, why don't you talk about this? Well, I think the simplest answer is I don't work for you. I don't know you and I'm not a radio dial that you can tune to hear the song that you like. I work for Jesus Christ. It goes by what Jesus Christ wants to talk about. And today's prophecy is something that the Lord has been talking to me about over the past couple of years. And here it is. The title of the prophecy for today, and this prophecy spans four days, January the 1st to January the 4th, 2024, that is today. The title is a capital letters title. It is called Yehudim Will Fall. Not every title that the Lord gives me is a capital letters title, but at times they are. And when you see it on the blog written in capital letters, Yehudim Will Fall, please know that God is always serious, but then he's double and triple serious when the, then the title is in capital letters. Yehudim will fall. I'm going to read for, to you from my notes, and the notes span four days, so please listen closely. Oh yes, the banner scripture for this prophecy is this. Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write... These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. And so here in Revelation chapter 1 to 3, Jesus is sending out letters to the various churches. He's writing to what they call the angels of the church. And he's basically talking to the leaders of the pastors of certain churches that existed then. And the Lord Jesus is making estimations of those churches. Are they righteous or unrighteous? Are they righteous with flaws? Are they unrighteous with redeeming qualities? Can they be saved? Are they salvageable? Will the Lord come and tell them, well done, my good and faithful servant? 
Or will the Lord come and reject them and rebuke them and tell them that they will not participate in his, in his kingdom because they are not reflective of who he is? Just a moment, please. And so Jesus is speaking here to the church in the region of Smyrna, and he's calling himself the first and the last. We know him also as Alpha and Omega, and he's declaring that he is the Lord who lives forever because he says, the first and the last who was dead, his crucifixion, and came to life, his resurrection. And he's just speaking of his all-knowing Godhood here, and he says, I know your works, and I know your tribulation, and I know your poverty. So he's talking about the things that they have gone through in the natural. But then he says to them, you are rich, meaning that you do have a hidden repository that makes you richer than people who have never gone through tribulation and poverty. And he says, I also know the blasphemy of those among you who say that they are Jews and they are not but they are in fact a synagogue of Satan. And this is the word the Lord has given me as the banner scripture for this message that is entitled in capital letters, Yehudim will fall. So on January the 1st, in the evening, I was breaking my fast of the day. I was breaking my fast on the evening of New Year's Day. And I have to say, I was quite hungry and I had just sat down to have something to eat so I prayed and I hungrily put that first bite in my mouth. And while I was chewing, I heard and I saw the word Yehudim. And it is Y-E-H-U-D-I-M. So I saw the word in front of me, not in front of me in the air. I just saw it in my eyes as like a vision. And I heard it and I heard the phrase that the Lord spoke at the same time in capital letters, Yehudim will fall. So I'm sitting there and I'm chewing. And then two more times I hear it, Yehudim will fall. And by the time you hear God like that, you know that a message is coming. And so you have to set aside whatever it is you're doing. And so I stopped eating because even though I know the word only loosely, I only know that it means Jew, but I wanted to be sure. So I put down my food and I picked up my phone and I Googled it. Yehudim. And after reading one, one definition here that doesn't match the other definition, what I can tell you is that this word Yehudim is the word that is just generally and collectively known to be referring to modern day Jews, the people that we know that live in Israel. But it also means something deeper. So to the rest of us, Yehudim simply means Jews. But within the Jewish community, it means something deeper. The word Yehudim is used by them amongst themselves because they consider themselves surety for one another. To consider yourself surety for one another means that if your next person that you see yourself as surety of gets in trouble, has a problem, has an issue, you are saying that you are willing to step up and cover that person's flaws. You're saying that you're willing to step up and cover that person's mistakes. You're saying that if the next person next to you who is within your community runs into trouble with their mortgage, you're going to pony up the money that they're owing. You are saying that if their child gets sick and they can't cover the medical expenses that they run up in maybe a hectic week of treatment, you're going to reach into your pocket like the Good Samaritan and settle that bill with the medical providers. Yehudim to us, simply means the Jews, but Yehudim among Jews means a brotherhood, a clan, a tightly knit group, whereby each Jew considers themselves surety for the next Jews. For the next Jew, it is an extremely tight and locked community which sees after itself first. So they put themselves first and they put other members of their community first. They do not exalt any other people group or type above their community. And they consider themselves locked in by reason of brotherhood, Yehudim. The Lord then said, because I had no more interest in my food, I was waiting for him to speak. The Lord said that Yehudim will fall before him and he will uncover their secrets. From the highest to the lowest, 
He will expose them and all their doings until there is nothing left to hide about what they have done. The Lord said that the full measure of what the Yehudim do is not known publicly among men. He says they cover one another's iniquities very well, and they make sure that there is nothing left to find by covering their tracks. Yehudim shall fall. This is all capital letters. You can tell when he's speaking normally and when he escalates into caps. Yehudim shall fall and the name of the Lord shall be worshiped in its true form in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. So you hear the Lord saying that a time is coming when the Jewish community is going to be humbled publicly in front of everyone. Kindly excuse the fluctuations of the light. There's nothing that I can do about that. The Yehudim will fall before the Most High Yah, and he's going to uncover their secrets. He says from the highest of them, that means the highest ranking, the richest, to the lowest of them, that means just ordinary, perhaps going to the local school and the local synagogue. Yah says that he will expose them in everything that they do, and there will be nowhere for them to hide and there will be nothing left about them to hide about all that they have done. So the Lord is saying that this community has secrets, secrets that people can't find. For hear his words, he says the full measure of their deeds is not known among men. This means that to be a community that is able to hide what you do until God says that the fullness, this means all the information, this means all the facts, about what the Yehudim do, the Lord says it's not known among men. This means that you can spend all your time on TikTok watching all the videos that you want and you can read all the books that you want and the, the brunt, the bulk of what the Yehudim do, the Lord is saying to you patiently, kindly and calmly that you've never heard of it and that you have no idea what they do because he says that they're excellent at covering one another's iniquities and making sure that there's nothing left to find by covering their tracks. This means that if God does not uncover the Yehudim, no man on earth, no matter how dig he go, deep he digs into any rabbit hole, will be able to uncover them. Yah says that Yehudim shall fall and the name of the Lord will be worshiped in its true form in all the earth. And this is the word of the Lord. Just a moment, please. So this was the full extent of the message that I received from the Lord on the 1st of January, 2024. Yehudim shall fall. I wrote it down and then I went back to my dinner. However, on January 2nd into January 3rd, so this is where the whole day of January 2nd has passed. I've gone to bed and now we're in those wee hours, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., heading into January 3, 2024. The Lord woke me up so strongly that it was almost as if someone had physically jolted me awake. When God has something on his mind, on his heart, it's not about your comfort. It's not about, oh, I don't feel comfort, comfortable listening to this. I don't feel comfortable saying this. This is one of the greatest indictments of God's church, which is that God will find someone who is bold enough and brave enough to follow him into the sewer where all the sewer activities are happening. The person will be brave enough and bold enough to look at the sewer activities, write them down accurately, exactly as they are, because what is the point of sugarcoating the sewer activities so that you can be comfortable when you hear it? What is the point of seeing the kinds of things that happen to people in detail and then writing it as a synopsis just so you can be comfortable? Are the evil deeds happening to the people in the basements as a synopsis? Are they, are they not happening to the people in detail? So why do you demand a whitewashed prophecy so you can feel good because you don't want to hear graphic things, but the four-year-old child is experiencing graphic things in real life? It is something to think about, church. You shame yourself on many levels before the Heavenly Father. When God has something on his heart, he's going to come in how he's going to come in. And I have to tell you that when the Lord woke me up like that, I wasn't happy because I had gone to bed at almost 3 a.m. And I had to wake up and be fresh. So I, was, I wasn't really happy, but he just shook me out of sleep and took me straight out of sleeping into wakefulness and said, I will break the menorah. I will break it. 
and humble them in front of everybody. And if you could look here on my tablet, there's exclamation marks and there's capital letters because that's exactly how he came up on me. I will break the menorah. I will break it and I will humble them in front of everybody. So I did not take the time to get a picture, but you can simply look up the word M-E-N-O-R-A-H. And I think it is a seven, I think the lamp has sevens. It's a little U and then it has seven tunnels of lamps. They call them lamps anyway. And then you stick candles in there and you light them. And then that is how you burn it. Um, during sacred times like Passover and things like that. And so right there, when the Lord made this strong statement, all of a sudden I wasn't seeing my room anymore. I was finding myself, this, this kind of landscape, it really was kind of scary because it just seemed to be a gray landscape, very plain. I don't remember trees or homes or anything like that, but I was here on earth and I was standing so small on the ground and I was dressed, uh, you know, just for outdoors. Everything that I was wearing is like, you know, a jacket with another kind of jacket on top and, and, and cargo pants and boots and everything. And I was standing on the earth so small and the sky was so angry. It's a dark gray blackish sky and the clouds were moving so fast, almost as if when you record the sky for a long time and then you see how, how storms build, so the clouds come in and they boil and they roll on each other and they get very black and then you start to see the lightning. There was no lightning, but the sky was so angry, black and gray and full of clouds moving fast like CGI in a movie. And then out of nowhere, um, thunder was cracking. But before I go there, there was a huge and mighty and shining silver menorah lit against the sky. So the menorah was extending all the way here from earth. And I was looking at it from a very small perspective because this thing was so great and so powerful and rose up from the earth. I mean, the stalk of the menorah alone was like a tree trunk and it rose up its seven fingers towards the sky like that, as if glory, grandeur, and might. And then all of a sudden there was this thunder crack, pow! And lightning without light. You know, lightning crackles, you can see it. There's the lightning, there's the little forks, there's the tendrils of the lightning. There was thunder and then lightning cracks a bolt with no light, no, no actual lightning flash and something in the heavens slashed that mighty menorah in two. Didn't slash it this way. For the rest of this prophecy, every time I say that the menorah was slashed, it was slashed diagonally so that all the lamps fell. All the lamps were slashed diagonally, leaving just little stubs of them still stuck to the big bottom of the menorah. So thunder and then this lightless lightning bolt and the menorah was slashed in two. A deep jagged gash appeared across the whole menorah and it paused there for maybe half a second and then a sound like steel steel girders screaming and this thing slides off and the top of the menorah that was slashed off the bottom fell and it smashed down to earth and while i'm standing and looking at this in shock it's as if the plane of the earth changes and i'm looking same sky different direction or maybe just a different angle, same position. And I see again, a mighty silver menorah, but lacking lamps, meaning that the menorah was not lit. There were no candles in there. Please understand what God is showing here. God is showing that there is something that looks like faith, but there is no faith in it. It is actually dark. It pretends to light up the world, but the real light of the world is Jesus Christ. This symbolism is showing you that it is mighty, but there's no light. It is not a way of light. It is a way of darkness. And the Lord has cut it down in the first vision that I saw. 
Then I saw the whole scene again, and the same mighty silver menorah carrying no lights, rising up from the earth, high into the sky. And this time, this thing looked like a pitchfork that was challenging the sky. It didn't look so curved. It looked kind of more, more angled, but it was still a menorah rising up as if challenging the very heavens itself. And I heard God's voice so angry, shout out, please look, because this time it is in bold letters. I heard him shout out, I will bend the menorah. I will bend the neck and the back of their pride. And this time I heard the same sound of steel being tortured under pressure. But instead of a slashed menorah, an unseen force in the heavens caused that massive thing, the entire neck of it with the lamps was bent until it was humbled next to the stalk. It was made to bend down like this and the head of seven upright lamps was pointed right down towards where the base was. And this menorah was not planted on the ground. It was lifted up into the heavens. When the head was completely bent, the whole menorah dropped out of the sky and it shattered. And right there, right there, as I came out of that vision, the Lord began to talk to me. Please listen. This word is for Jews everywhere, all over the world. You are in Europe. You are here in the United States, the largest population of Jewish people outside of the land of Israel itself. You are in Israel. God is talking to you. Hear the words of the Lord. I will expose the Jews in every walk of life and in every area where they are found. You will hear of scandals upon scandals the biggest names, the richest families, the most powerful dynasties that have held power for countless years. They have exalted themselves above the whole earth, but I will lay them low in a pit and let times pass over them. I am the Lord, I change not. You cannot promote a lie and hide the truth forever. I will expose them and drag them down and let their crimes be uncovered wherever they may be. People will know who they are. The wealthiest families will be in the news for scandal and usury. You will see their faces on the news. Their scandals will pour out and you will know I am the Lord. It's about three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock. I don't know. I didn't check my watch, but here is God showing me this mighty, mighty representation. This representation is a people, a community, Yehudim, and at the same time, they represent a faith. A faith that no matter where you come from in this earth, no matter what your background is, no matter how learned you are, how woke you are, or how deceived you want to be, God is showing something that is perpetrating to be something that it is not. This is what the Father is revealing. He is showing something that has raised itself up to challenge the very heavens. And surely here on earth, you may not challenge this religion. You may not challenge this community. You may not speak unless they'll take away your movie endorsements. They'll take away your record endorsements. They'll take away your sneaker deal. They'll sit you down from the basketball team. They'll write about you in all the newspapers and you will get canceled for speaking. God's message is that he is going to expose Yehudim wherever they are in all walks of life. God's message is that the world should prepare to hear scandals upon scandals that Bernie Madoff and Jeffrey Epstein from this community were just the beginning. God's message is that the biggest names have come to the end of the road. The richest families, he says, and the most powerful dynasties that have held power for countless years. God's message says that they have lifted themselves up above the whole earth, but now Yah, the father of all life, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, will lay them low in a pit and let times pass over them. When the Bible says, I will lay you low in a pit, 
and let times pass over them, that's just saying that you're going to die and then the years are going to pass over you. That's times passing over you. God says that he is the Lord and he does not change. And this community cannot promote a lie and hide the truth forever. Yah says that he will expose them and he will drag them down. This means that people will be humbled. When God is telling you here, he says that I will expose them, drag them down, and let their crimes be uncovered wherever they may be. That means that if people are Yehudim in France and you're doing stuff there, maybe with the banking community, you're doing stuff there with the secret Nazis, you're doing stuff anywhere, the Lord says that scandal will find you and that you will be uncovered. Their crimes will be uncovered wherever they may be. So this is a worldwide breakout of scandals whereby you may hear a name in the press and think, I've never heard of that guy before. And yet God says that they'll be coming from the, from the wealthy families, the powerful dynasties. And I can share with you here something that the Lord revealed to me in 2022 that when you think about it, it makes sense. But at the time it took me by surprise. The Lord said to me, Celestial, there is so much wealth here in America and the people who own the wealth are not the people who are constantly in Fortune 500. They're not the people who are constantly in Forbes magazines. He said that there is money behind money in this country. And the Lord said to me that there are wealthy people here whose faces, the faces of the grandfathers have not been seen since 1911. Because these people are not like the ordinary people on the street. Ordinary people on the street are quite craven. You hunt attention and you love to be seen. You don't understand the value of privacy and keeping to yourself. Everything you think, you say it. It must be seen in a TikTok comment. You must make a video and show people. And powerful people are not like that. Powerful people not only understand the value of keeping your mouth shut, powerful people have weaponized privacy. And that is why they can do anything outside of the sight of the media. If your grandfather has not been seen since uh, 1911, then that means that he has taught his daughters and his sons and their sons, 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 the value of privacy. And so you don't know who they are. You think it's the Rockefellers. You think it's the Vanderbilts. You think it's the Hiltons. You think it's Anderson Cooper and his background. But you don't know who the money behind money is. There is money in America that is silent. There is money in all the mega centers of the world that is silent. True money doesn't boast. It doesn't wear Prada on the chest like the poor people do. True money understands privacy because privacy is power. So true money doesn't strut. And the Lord was teaching me and saying to me, my daughter, there are people who are trillionaires and yet they could put on loafers, khakis, an ordinary t-shirt and a cap. And they would walk around in the mall in all the stores having the ability to buy and break and build that mall 500 times over and no one in the mall would know who they are and that's because grandfather's face wasn't seen since 1911 and you've never seen the grandson's face you don't know who he is so when he comes outside he's just ordinary joe schmo who has money to build and break down nations but god says because of the scandals people will know who they are You'll hear a name, you'll see a face, and you'll have no idea who it is. And then they will tell you the heiress daughter of someone who owns $500 billion or something like that. God is going to uncover. It's not only the pastors who are going to be made naked. So if you can't stand one pastor being made naked, I think you're going to have a stroke by the time the end times are over. There are secrets that bother the Lord. There are storylines that take place in the background that you can't research on TikTok and YouTube because the information is so carefully gatekept that you may die with your eyes never being placed upon it. But the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth looking for one person to trust. And I know that there are a few people out there that's so glad that he found me. People will know who the Yehudim are. And God says that the dynasties will fall, the rich families will be exposed, the biggest names are going to have their scandals. Because God says that, Yehudim, you cannot promote a lie and hide the truth forever. You're going to be exposed and dragged down, and all your crimes will be covered. 
People will know who you are. The wealthiest families will be in the news for scandal and usury. Usury is a form of extortion that Jews claim they don't practice. Usury is a form of extortion that is completely limited to financial dealings. It's where you lend money out, but the interest that you charge on the money is so high that it's very easy for anyone to see that you basically want to put the borrower either in poverty or slavery or both. You will see their faces on the news. Their scandals will pour out and you will know that I am the Lord. So I've seen two visions of the menorah, one where it is slashed. It is like a rooted tree rising up into the heavens and it gets slashed and all the unlit lamps fall to the earth and smash. Then the second where the menorah has now begun to exalt itself into heaven, just like Lucifer. What is the verse I read at the bottom? The synagogue of Satan, those who say that they are Jews and they are not. So then I saw another vision and this one was so real. It really, yeah, it's really something. I saw myself dressed like a curator. In this vision, I was the kind of woman that is hired by extremely rich people to travel the earth privately on their behalf and to source for them fine secrets and well hidden art. I've spoken of this before the prophecy is called the center will not hold. And in that prophecy, I was saying that when Russia comes here to invade America, one of the, one of the benefits of it for Russia is that they are going to discover a lot of fine art, art that has completely gone missing in the art world. Things that people last saw in the 1800s and say, oh, you know, this African tribe used to have this thing, a solid head of gold, and it was rumored to have gone missing during the invasion. Yeah, it went missing. It made its way to England. And then when, they, when the English got broke, they will just sell it here to a billionaire and it's in his basement and then Russia will get it. This is the trail of ownership of things that have entire tribes of people all over the world crying and wishing they could get it back. It's right here in the basements for anyone who cares to know. So I was a lady like this, and I was wearing this really nice outfit of gray. It was a gray skirt suit, um, a smart gray top with a gray skirt at the bottom, a suit, and then it was belted with a belt that had a large gold buckle on the waist. And I was wearing these thick soled shoes and black gloves that went just to the wrist. And my job was to go about looking for private pieces that I could source for my owners. And so I came to this art museum that I could feel in this vision, this art museum is not open to the public. This is not where the plebeians can come and breathe on the glass. You are not allowed. Only certain people are invited to go into this museum and look at the carefully arranged pieces old art, famous art, lost art, and all that. That what was in this place. And I was wandering in between the exhibits from place to place, from room to room, until I came to the heart of the museum where there was a star exhibit. You will always know the central exhibit. In the museum, there will be a lot of lights shining on it. There will be tasteful and dimmed lighting. And so I was looking around and then I came to the room where the star exhibit was. And the minute I saw it, I thought, oh my. And I went in there. The place has specialized in tasteful and dimmed lighting. So instead of overhead lights in that particular room, every exhibit had these small little bulbs at different parts of the boxes. Remember an exhibit is always a strong base, usually made of wood, sometimes metal, but it's usually wood. And then the top will be like an aquarium, a fish tank, and sometimes they shine lights in there, but these ones, they had bulbs outside of the glass. So the bulbs would, at the various points of the glass would shine and then light up whatever it was. So most of them had well-placed bulbs, but this exhibit was not going with the small bulb technology. They had big spotlights shining on this thing. It was more lit up than every other exhibit I had seen up to that point, And it was sitting at this the heart of a museum, a big steel gray menorah. It was not silver. It was steel, steel or iron, a dull color. 
not bright at all, not shiny at all, needing many lights to light it up because of how dull and imposing the metal was. Very huge menorah in a thick glass case. This menorah was not as big as the two that I had seen in the sky because obviously it was contained in a building, but it was still very big and it was the centerpiece of everything else around it. So I'm standing and I'm observing this menorah. I'm just looking at it and suddenly something slashed that menorah in anger. Something slashed it inside its protective glass case. I heard the strike before my eyes registered what had happened. And just like the first menorah in the sky that got slashed, the slash was diagonal like that. And for a brief moment, the top of the menorah stayed in place on the bottom. But then with that same screeching sound when steel is under pressure, the top split slowly from the bottom and fell forward with a thump, a massive hit against the glass. And I jumped back because I thought it would splash and spatter on me, but that was very strong glass. The menorah simply hit the front of the glass and then it slid down and crashed to the bottom. But I noticed that in all this commotion, and we know that museum exhibits are very sensitive, the alarm did not go off at all. I was looking in total amazement. But when I was in that third vision of a curator looking for pieces for my bosses, I did not remember that I had seen two visions previously of the Lord of a menorah being slashed to pieces because it was exalting itself into the heavens and of a menorah being bent and humbled until its neck and its back were curved down because it was lifting itself into the heavens. When I came out of this vision, Lord said to me, the menorah will be broken. I will break the symbol of their pride. Tell the Yehudim, you know me and you know my voice. The day of your reckoning has come. The day of your exposure is at hand. Thus says the Lord. So you're listening to the prophecy, Yehudim will fall January 1st to January 4th, 2024. I have described three visions. And at the end of the third vision, the Lord said again, speaking of the menorah, the famous symbol of Judaism worldwide, the menorah will be broken. And he says he will break the symbol of Jewish pride. Tell all Yehudim, you know me and you know my voice, and the day of your reckoning has come. Reckoning is when someone has been watching you for a long time. And Christians, you can learn from this because many of you don't listen, but if you do listen, you can learn from this. You think that the days of your life that you are living and the things you are doing, the words that you speak and the activities that you practice, you think that it's all under your control. You're like the proud in the Psalms who says, that our tongue is our own, meaning we can say what we like and we'll talk about anything the way we want to. And you think that Jesus is not listening and that Jesus is not taking notes, but he is. The day of reckoning is when somebody has watched you for a long time. They've observed your ways. They've seen your comings and your goings. They've checked out the temperature of your heart. They know what you will do and say before you do and say it. And now they've made a decision about you and now they're ready to share the outcome of that decision with you. However, when the decisions are positive, we do not call it the day of reckoning. A reckoning means that your actions have finally caught up with you and now it's time to pay. And so God says that the day of reckoning has come for Yehudim and the day of their exposure is to hand. Thus says the Lord. Now today on January 4th, as soon as I woke up, the Lord said to me, you will make my prophecy today. As soon as you have time, make my video and tell them what I said. I will break and bend the menorah, the symbol of their jury. That is J-E-W-R-Y, another word that encompasses the whole of those who call themselves Jews. I will break and bend the menorah, the symbol of their jewelry, the symbol of their pride. I will bring them low to the earth 
and they will never have wealth again. Jews in America, Yehudim in the United States of America, thus says the Lord, you will never have wealth again. Your money will be taken by slave masters who will come for you and take you captive. You will try to flee, but you will not make it. You will not hide. I know you by your names and your families and your bloodlines. I am your old enemy for what you have done to my people. I will replace you with people who will spoil you and take what you have from you and you will be humbled to the dust. The years of your glory are finished. You were the first, but did you not know my word? My word says the first shall be last. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. So says the Lord, you will flee, but you will not make it. I will drive you from my land and you will flee to the four corners of the world. You will go to the four points of the compass and everything you own will be taken for spoil. I will remove you from my fertile hills and valleys and take back Israel, my possession, my homeland, the heart of my affection, and you will not be seen in it again. Thus says the Lord. So the Lord is sending a particular message here to Jews in two places. This is Jews in the United States. And then he speaks of Jews that are in Israel. God says to the United States Jews that he will take your wealth. Your money will be taken from you by slave masters that will come for you and that will make you captives. Now, I'm not going to speculate who these slave masters are. If the Lord does not say something, then I'm not going to make things up to make people comfortable here. That's not what I do here. God says you will try to flee, but you won't make it. You won't hide, he says, because he knows your true identities. So us, the people outside, do not know your true identities. I did speak of people from Nazi Germany that came here and changed their names and things like that, but it might be something completely different, different that God is saying. He knows the Jewish families. He knows the Jewish bloodlines, and this is true. You can't hide anything from God. I'm your old enemy for what you have done to my people. So clearly the Jews have an enemy and they have humbled and done things to that enemy. And God says that enemy is actually his people and therefore he will requite their wounds upon Yehudim. I will replace you with people who will spoil you and take what you have from you. To be spoiled means that an enemy will come upon you, humble you, and then the spoil is actually your possessions. Your houses, your cars, your gold watches, your pins, your safety deposit boxes, your money, and the things that you have hidden in the backyard, and the things that you have in Switzerland, and only you have the key hanging around your neck. All of that, when it falls into the hands of your enemy, that is spoil. You will be humbled to the dust. This means to be brought low and also the process whereby you lose your life. The years for your glory are finished. You were, you were the first, but didn't you know that my word says that the first shall be last and the last will be first. You will flee, but you will not make it. And I will share here just briefly uh, a picture that the Lord will show me from time to time over the last four and five years. And I've never asked the Lord deeply about this. I know that there are people who stay up all day and all night and you have 500 folders of this stuff and God bless you, but this is not my portion. What the Lord wants to talk about, he will talk about in his own time. And then I will wait until he tells me to speak. So the vision I would see from time to time when the Lord would be bringing up some aspects of this situation is just... Jewish people running across the earth in that familiar uniform. There are people who are Yehudim and they just wear civvies and they dress like everyone else. They live on the Upper East Side and they have tons of pots of money and it doesn't show that they are Yehudim. But there are Yehudim whereby it is very easy to see that they are Yehudim. They wear uh, what I would just call the, the black and white penguin uniform, which is the black jacket, the white shirt, and the black pants, even the littlest baby boy will be wearing that and the yarmulke and then the women perhaps might wear something else but the men are quite distinctive and i would see this thing whereby you see a man with a very bushy black beard and he's holding just one of these you know these old suitcases from the old days not the soft suitcases that we have suitcases used to be very hard and square in those days he's holding something like that and 
he's holding a little boy by the hand and they are running so fast that the little boy's feet are not even touching the ground. It's almost like he's bouncing along as his father runs with all his might with the mother nearby holding another suitcase like that. I would see this thing and in my own mind privately, I would wonder what is it that could ever possibly happen to make Jewish people leave Israel? And I'm not here to provide any answers for that. The Lord has not told me and I do not speculate. But here God is saying, I will drive you from my land and you will flee to the four corners of the world. You will go to the four points of the compass and everything you own will be taken for spoil. This is speaking to the Jews in Israel. God says, I will remove you from my fertile hills and valleys and I will take back Israel, my possession, my homeland. Remember, Jesus was born there and in his man form, that is his homeland. And then in God's, God's form, God always says that that is the place that his heart dwells upon the city of David, beloved Jerusalem, God's sacred city. He says, the heart of my affection, and you will not be seen in it again. Thus says the Lord. So this is the prophecy from today, January the 4th. And then since yesterday, January the 3rd, and today, January the 4th, this phrase has just been popping up in my sleep, in my heart, while I work, while I walk, and it is this. Sephardic Jews. Now this, this is, this part is unknown to me. Sephardic Jews. I've just been hearing it at random for the last two days, January 3rd and January 4th. Sephardic Jews, Sephardic Jews over and over, over and over. So I finally looked it up today and it refers to a smaller portion of modern day Jews who come from a Hispanic background, Spain to be precise. Now I still didn't know what it meant because it kept coming. So after some time of hearing it today, preparing to make this video, waiting for my break, I finally said, Lord, what about Sephardic Jews? What about them? Do you have a separate word for them? And he was quiet. So I asked him again and he said, no. And then I said, but why do you keep saying it then? And then he didn't answer me. So I left it. But then an hour later, I said, Lord, I am confused. You are saying their name because I did hear it, but I do not know what I am to say to them. Is the, If there is no word for them, then all I will do is mention that I heard Sephardic Jews, but I will tell the people that there is nothing to say about them. And then the Lord said, this word is for them too. So this word that I am bringing to you now, covering January 4th to Janu January 1st to January 4th, 2024, is for all Yehudim. The last thing that the Lord added just before I began to make this message is, you will see them falling from their high places, falling from their palaces of grandeur. They will lose all their wealth on the stock market all their stocks and the bonds and the options that they have in these big companies will suffer in the economic downturn that is coming. And the people who are most heavily invested in these big companies will take a hit. They will fall in scandals and they will fall in exposés. The Yehudim will fall. Thus says the Lord. And you have heard the full of the prophecy. Yehudim will fall. January 1st to January 4th, 2024. The Lord gives me his message and I bring it forth. By now, if you are an old subscriber, you will understand that nothing is going to be sugar-coated here for your comfort or for you to feel happy or even, please understand, for you to understand. It's not necessary for me to make sure that you understand before I can prophesy. I don't work for the people out there Go and read Ezekiel chapter 2, Ezekiel chapter 3, and Jeremiah chapter 1. And that is all you need to know about Celestial. The fact that God has called her, raised her, said a word in her mouth, and made her face like flint, so that even if there were only 32 people here once upon a time, and there are now many, many more that I cannot count, and even if the Lord will bring millions more, I made a covenant to the Lord, and it was very simple. When this channel was small, I said to the Lord, 
There are not many people here, but I will serve them as if they were millions. And that is because I'm working for you, God. I will work as diligently with 32 subscribers as I would as if they were millions. This work is from God to me for you. And if you do not want it, I'm at peace with that. I've always said that you need to understand that it is your soul that you have and that you are playing with out there. My soul is locked in. I'm going with him all the way to the end. You may be a new subscriber, but there are many things that I have shared in these videos and I make no bones about them because there's no need to lie to you. There's no need to pretend with you or deceive you. The Lord has said to me, Celestial, you will see all your prophecies fulfilled. All your prophecies. So that means all the political prophecies that human beings can easily believe and say, I had the same dream. I will see them come to pass. And all the prophecies that people say, oh, I can't follow her anymore because she's speaking of Nephilim and giants. I will see them fulfilled. When the giants are outside in your street, on your neighborhood, smashing down your neighbor's houses, you will become filled with the understanding of what prophecy is. The speaking forth of a time yet to come. Some of you that complain will not even live to see what I'm talking about. I brought a prophecy here, a very heavy one, just a month ago. It has a brown covering and there's a pen writing on it and it's called release the scrolls, open the scrolls. And one of the painful things in that prophecy, which is a live call when I'm praying with people and the Lord just begins to bubble forth. One of the painful things that the Lord said is that by summer 2024, many people will not be here. Many people will not be around. You're arguing about things and saying, are they true or not true? And you won't even be here to weigh them when they come to pass. But I, I know who called me. I know what he told me to do. And as long as there is breath, time, and Wi-Fi, I will do it. I'm Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. You can follow along on any of the platforms but you don't have to follow at all. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.